In this video, we're going to provide an overview of the 3D Coat Smart Materials Store, as well as the installation and usage of the Scan Smart Materials. To get started, I'll click here to go to the store. If this is my first time, I would want to create an account and log in. You can sample the materials before you decide which package suits your purposes. The basic pack is just a one-time purchase only of 100 credits, depending on your situation. Then you have a monthly subscription plan, an annual plan. Once you have done that, you can go to the PBR Scans tab, click on that. And then over on the left-hand side, I'm going to click on Free, and then the asset I want to sample. So I'll click Material. I can narrow it down to a specific category. Let's look at rubber. I'll click on this one. I can click the arrow on the right hand side to preview the individual maps that are created. Here at the bottom center you can see the map size of the material. You can click download. Also if this were not a free asset you would see the credit listed here. I've already gone through and downloaded about a dozen or so. If I'm logged in, I'll see another tab here called My Scans. There, I can click on that to see what all I have downloaded. Let me scroll down a little bit further and point out that you can also narrow your search by color, the roughness, whether it's glossy, matte, or very rough. And you can narrow it by the texture size, both width and height. Let me scroll back up. Let's look at metal. You can also change how it's displayed here on the page. Okay. Now, let me uncheck free. We'll go back to material and let's look at metal. I can continue clicking to move on to the next material. Let me look at this one. Once more, you'll see the credits listed here and the texture size 4K by 2K. Now let's talk about where your files are downloaded. They will typically be downloaded to your default download directory. And from there, inside of 3D Coat, we can access those. I want to go to the file menu and click on install extension. Go to the downloads directory. I can click on these and install them one at a time or multi select. And click open. I've already installed these, so I don't need to do that again. Once installed, you need to restart the application and you can find all the unpacked image files in the documents slash 3D Coat 4.8 slash Patterns directory. Now back in 3D Coat, I'm going to hide this camo layer while we test our new scan materials. If I come over to the Smart Materials panel and click on this List menu toggle, I can view all my material folders. Let's go to Metal. I can then click on one of the thumbnails to enable it. I can open the Preview window. and see what it's going to look like if I were to either fill or paint. I'll click on one of these. It's a little bit easier to see. There are a few different ways we can actually apply it to our model. 
One is to use the paintbrush. Another is the fill tool. Once that is enabled, we can click on individual meshes or UV islands to apply it to that specific element. I'll just left mouse click on the other side as well. I'm actually going to undo that because I want to make sure I'm on the right layer. You can also paint. I'll hide this preview. Some of these draw modes are pressure sensitive. This one is absolute, meaning it's not dependent upon your brush pressure. So it doesn't matter how hard you press down, it's going to be constant. You can lock different objects that you may have in a scene. Surface materials are based on your UVs. So if I wanted to lock the body from being painted on, I could click the lock icon here. I can also attach any given smart material to a selected layer. To demonstrate, I'll right mouse click on the thumbnail and click on the option to attach material. Okay. Now that material has been applied to wherever I have pixel information. So whatever I have painted, it will switch. It's almost as if it fills those same pixels with this other material. I can subsequently click on other material thumbnails and not only will 3D Coat switch to it, but it will store all selected materials in a material history panel. To access it, I need to go to the Windows menu under pop-ups and select it here at the top. I can click on one or the other and 3D Coat will update it. I can detach this material. If I want to start over and completely clear this layer, I can hit the delete key to remove all pixel information. Whatever channels are enabled, when I hit the delete key, that's what it will clear. Now, with this one, I can right click and choose Smart Material Editor. And I will see a large thumbnail. If I click this icon, I'll see an even larger thumbnail. Whatever changes I may make to the material, I will see it reflected in this one. If I enable the preview window, then this will be hidden. I'm going to scale this preview window down. That way it will render a bit faster. Okay. I can scale the overall map here. When you drag to the right, it typically will reduce the scale. When you drag to the left, it will increase it. I'm going to also increase the light level here so it's a little bit easier to see. This is a dark metal. Also, if I disable something like depth or color, then I won't see it in the preview. I'm just seeing glossiness and color right now. If I disable glossiness, all I'm seeing is color. You can see the maps that were generated here. I can change the color on this one. I can see that reflected in the preview. So if I want to make sure this is more of a reddish copper, I can do that. And change the name. Hit OK. Once I do that though, I want to save this. Normally you would click Save as New, but this material is part of the material history, so it's basically in a temporary state at this point. To make it a permanent addition to the library, I need to right-click over the thumbnail and then click To Materials Library. Now use the Fill tool to click and apply it. 
The depth is pretty strong right now, but that's fine. We can always dial that down after the fact. So I can go through here and just continue clicking. If I want to quickly add it to everything, I can right click and choose fill entire layer. This is the new material that we just added. We could also use the texture editor as well. Like here, I can click on the individual UV islands to fill it in. And that will conclude this overview of the Smart Materials Store as well as the installation and usage of the scanned materials. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.